United States. Clearly, he has won 21 straight. He comes in on a 21-fight uh, win streak. Got 30 knockouts out of 39 fights. So no matter who he's fighting, if you can that, get that many knockouts, it's, it's somewhat impressive. Morales' take on him was he had looked at, I believe, nine fights right. um, that uh, Hamili was in. And while he said he's got a good right hand and he looks tough, he didn't think the opposition that Hamili had fought was that good. So despite the fact that Hamili comes in here as such a big underdog, things can happen. And let's point out that tonight there's two yeah. Mexican champions that fought. Both of them didn't win so far. It's one and one. Oh, it's an amazing night. And it, one thing that Eric, Eric was trying to be diplomatic when we talked to him about this fight. He said, yeah, I looked at the tapes, and he's got this, and he's got that. And he finally submitted, you know what, to be honest, he doesn't. Hamili doesn't measure up. So we'll, we'll have to see if he, he doesn't measure up. The other thing you have to look from Eric Morales is that he has had a lot of other things on his agenda other than his fight. He keeps talking about fighting Barrera. He keeps uh, fighting about, well, he says he wants fighters to come here to Tijuana, but he says, by gosh, he'll go across the pond <laughs> if the prince wants to get in the ring, Nassim Mohamed, and we'd all like to see that. That's for sure. Uh, he, he has other things on his mind because we know that he has the goods, as we mentioned at the top of the telecast tonight, and this is just another step up the ladder. You can't blame him for that. No, and of course, in boxing, you're always looking a step beyond. Clearly, the Barrera fight and the Prince Hamed fight are the things that are would be on his plate in the future if he can keep winning. But he's very aware of the fact that he can't stub his toe on Hamili this evening. And now we will find out whether this moment will affect Renanti Hamili. This is a long way from the Philippines, and he is entering into what is decidedly hostile territory. And oh, by the way, hostile territory that's not too happy right now after their other champion loss. Yeah, it could get real ugly. As the lights go down, we have a light show going on here at the Torreo de Tijuana, south of the border in Tijuana, Mexico. Okay, now the lights come back up, Al Bernstein, and the familiar Mexican music is playing, always festive. What a night. As the crowd, now they just teased them a little bit. The music now they're kind of holding in there. As Jamili steps into the ring, don't know a lot about him, but I'll tell you, he's very, has a very intense personality. Well, he, he is a, as you see his record, 30 KOs and 39 wins. Clearly he has fought no one that boxing fans would recognize in this part of the world. But he has been the number one contender for the WBC. As I mentioned earlier in the telecast, had a chance to fight for the IBF title. Turned it down because he wanted to, to get the WBC version against a very tough guy in Eric Morales. And he is, his moment is upon him now, and he'll find out if he can deliver. The man coming into the ring now, 22-year-old Eric Morales knows he's delivered before. local fans who have just taken a punch in the stomach a few minutes ago. 33 wins, no losses, 27 knockouts. Up to this point in his career, everything you want, he's the full package in a fighter, hoping to put on a show and hoping to increase his value in the world of boxing. Well, this is the fourth time he's defended here in Tijuana, and uh, he hopes that it will be as successful as the last three. Tale of the tape, let's take a look at it. Hamili in a, a hurry to get this chance to win a championship, 27 years old, just a tad shorter and just a sh little bit shorter in the reach. And the interesting thing about that is he will be the one probably trying to box on the outside, I think, and uh, yet doesn't have the advantage in reach and height. And again, we take a look, these would be the WBC rules, which are uh, very similar, except if there's a clash of heads and uh, uh, it causes a cut and they have to go to the scorecards, it will be after six rounds. <laughs> All right, 
Let's get, let's get it going and send it up to Michael Buffer. Thomas y Caballeros, Bob Arons, Top Rank Incorporated con Corona Extra, La Cerveza Más Fina. Presentamos 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, WBC Supervisor Ringside, Ariosto Manrique. Also sanctioned by the Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico Boxing Commission, President Senor Roberto Magana. Senior Physician at Ringside, Dr. Ramon Cruz. Boxing Directors, Rigoberto Martin Del Campo. Jose Luis Esqueda, Timekeeper at the Bell and counting for the knockdown seconds, Sergio Fernandez. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Tommy Kazmarek, Chuck Hassett, and Tony Castellano. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, working for the 118th time in a world title bout, World Boxing Hall of Fame referee, Marty Dinkin. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Thomas and Caballeros están listos. Con el Torero de Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. Damas y caballeros. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! En la esquina azul, in the blue corner, wearing black with silver, is Diendo Negro con Plateado. He weighs 121 and one half pounds. Pasando 121 y medio, his professional record, 39 victories, including 30 knockouts with four losses. Damas y caballeros de Paranaque, Filipinas, presentamos el retador, Renante Y ahora, damas y caballeros, en la esquina Cantradia, vistiendo negro con blanco, pesando 122 libras, at 122 pounds, con un récord profesional, invisible, en 32 combates, undefeated in 32 bouts, all victories including 26 knockouts, and he is rated among the best, pound for pound, in the world today. Damas y caballeros, aquí presentamos el campeón mundial invisible de los pesos super gallos de Tijuana, Baja California, México. El primerte, Eric, el terrible They are getting Renate Hamili's considerable group out of the ring. He had quite an entourage in the ring with him. And now we're set for the instructions. Well, he had to bring a few friends to town. Yeah, really. Final, final instructions from Marty Dinkin. A scheduled 12-rounder for the WBC Super Bantamweight title, now held by Eric Morales. The crowd is on its feet. in the white trunks, Hamili in the black trunks. These first minutes, so important for Hamili to get his bearings against a huge puncher in Morales, a guy who can take you out early. Hamili, who said he was going to use the center of the ring 
And he's doing that, but also is leaving himself open by throwing big shots early in this fight. He definitely said he would not fight this fight on the ropes. How that fits into Morales' strategy, we'll soon see. He's going after Eric Morales. Absolutely. He's a tall fighter. Morales doesn't fight that many tall fighters in his weight division, as tall as him. So that's a, a plus for Hamili. Wide punches from Hamili so far. And it's one of the things Morales sees people saw on the tapes, and that's not a good thing against Eric Morales. Oh, big, oh, big right big, hand. Big haymaker coming right there that, that missed from Hamili on the outside. And a nice counter right that landed by Eric Morales. McGrallis lands one on the chin up against the ropes as Hamili, where he says he does not want to be. <laughs> Round one halfway done. You can almost feel Eric Morales trying to see what Hamili has to offer here. We're starting to see the jab much more from Eric Morales in recent fights. I mean, he's not afraid to throw, though, Al. And he, as he did just there. Going after Morales early. Yes, he is. For people to think of Morales as just some slugger is a real misnomer. Look at how well he keeps his hands up, brings his hands back to position after he throws. Eric Morales, a very well-schooled, technician in the ring. Inside 50 seconds, round one. Those punches not effective, but Morales seeing an opening and trying to take advantage. Amili getting through this first round. He landed, he was hit with one really good right hand, but other than that, has done a pretty good defensive job and not been hit with anything huge except for that one punch. He's traveling a long way for a shot. He said he's wanted for a long, long time. Felt like he was being pushed aside. He is the number one contender in the WBC. 10 seconds left in round one of a scheduled 12 round. We're gonna take you inside Eric Morales' corner. Now. You got to walk him to your right side. Try the hook. Throw the top. Feint on the bottom, and then throw the hook to the top. He's not that difficult. He's just floating around. You can knock him down in this round. <laughs> <laughs> Don't press so hard. Bring him into the center of the ring. Faint to the bottom and then go up top. We need that right. Up top. Now I'll ask uh, Al Burns to, to interpret those instructions for him. What are they trying to get him to do? Al? Well, I think they, they think that if he faints to the body, Hamili will bring his guard down, and then he can go upstairs. They want him to go downstairs eventually a little bit, and they, they think ultimately that's going to open up the top. But he's not fainting much, Eric Morales, and he's capable of doing that. We're in round two of this WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. Eric Morales looking to ignite the local Tijuana crowd. Makes his home here. Proud of the fact that he brings fighters here to fight him. He really has done that. His fourth defense in Tijuana of the seven that he is, he is making. And uh, he wants to show the world that there's opportunities here in Tijuana. He brings commerce to the city when he fights and um, good for him. It's his hometown. And certainly the atmosphere here at the Bull Ring is a great atmosphere for a boxing match. Camilli throwing a lot, not much getting through the defense of Morales. But he is throwing a lot. Good right Morales, hand gets in. Morales is looking to counter. You can see he's not in any kind of trouble, but is looking for his spots. 
Hamili so far a pretty busy fighter now. Yeah, he has been. And that's good for him because he's he's keeping Eric Morales off guard by throwing punches. If you let a puncher just load up and come to you, you're in trouble. Now he's bullying his way forward behind his shoulder. There comes Morales. Camille beginning to get a sense of the power that he's facing tonight. Morales using the jab. We saw him use it in his last uh, title defense against Ramirez. He, he boxed a lot in the last four or five rounds of that fight. Big hook lands by Morales. He's got power in both hands. That's what's tough when you're facing him. Pick that one off pretty cleanly. Morales leaning up against the rope, looking to counter. Amelia just keeps throwing. There's a short inside right that found its mark. He's got a little bit, a little bit of a backpedaling going on by Hamili. Ten seconds left in round two. Morales has found a combination that will work, a double right hand, and he's been working it. As we look at Hamili in his corner, he has got to keep smothering Morales for another round or two because if he gets a punch in the room, I think Morales has found the key to landing a couple of uppercuts and straight right hand. But I think in the last round he tasted the power of Morales in a big way. Breathe in. You got a box. Half speed. Don't let him pressure. And don't use the ropes that much. Well, now that Morales, as we enter round three, has found a combination to see if he can crack open the safe now and get the job done. You know, Hamili told us he thought Morales was going to move and run on him. I, I never thought that was going to happen, and it certainly isn't. What Eric Morales is doing, though, is showing a little bit of movement, enough lateral movement, and showing us what he wants to show, that he is a boxer puncher, that he's not just a guy that goes in and lands a big shot, and uh, if he doesn't, he's incapable of doing other things. It's very important to him to shed that, that label. Very confident fighter. And he should be as he steps up. There's once again the right. As the world learns more and more about him. But a lot's been put on him, Al. Yeah, people are already comparing him to Chavez and saying he's the next great Mexican champion. But I think he's handling it with uh, a certain degree of aplomb. And I think he knows that unless he keeps working hard and winning fights, that's going to all go away. Just on the inside. You get the sense he's steadily trying to figure out what he needs to do here while Amelie is steadily just throwing punches and coming in. Amelie is on is undaunted by what's going on here. He's not intimidated at all. By Morales and lands a nice right hand. Hamili pushes a lot of his punches though. He doesn't throw them with a lot of snap. And that diminishes some of the power. There's an uppercut that landed. There's another combination that landed. Hamili seems to take it so far, but he's backing up now. Another combination. The right got into the chin. He lunged and got hit with an uppercut, and those were A punches by Morales. Those were not secondary punches. Those were the kind of punches Morales usually hurts people with, and Hamili was able to take those shots. I think he was stunned momentarily, but he didn't go anywhere. He acted like he'd been there before. Yeah, and I don't think he has been. I, I don't think he's taken punches like Morales can throw, but 
he was able to deal with it. About 30 seconds left here in round number three of the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. It's been a good round, though, for Morales. He's landed some very good punches and uh, figured out a little bit what to do with Pamili when he lunges in. He's going to try the uppercut again and work inside if he can and step back out. Trying the fake that his corner was talking about. Here is where Morales was able to land the counter uppercut. Now it didn't hurt Camille as much as he would have liked because he was backing up and threw it off his back foot. But he was still able to get some good work done on the inside. And you see the good defense of Hamili though, keeping his hands up and not allowing Eric Morales to land the really big shot. Well, here we go in round number four, and we'll begin to see if, if Eric's beginning to figure this guy out. As we said, he didn't know a lot about him coming in, and so maybe he's starting to figure some things out. Certainly a good round three, good solid round three in favor of Eric Morales. Eric Morales is, make no mistake, a boxer from the ground up. He put on his gloves for the first time at the age of five. His father, Jose, was a title contender in the 1970s, so he li has lived, eat, and breathed a boxing since he was a five-year-old. He trains in a gym over his father's store here in North Tijuana. I mean, you can't be more grounded than that when you're training over your dad's store. Still lives in the north zone of uh, Tijuana, an area that's a little rough, but... Uh, nobody bothers him. No. Nobody bothers him. Quite comfortable there. He is aware that US, U.S. boxing critics have said he doesn't fight in the U.S. enough. But he'll take that as long as he can bring the championship here and have people come here to fight. Well, and I think that really the fights that where he has to fight there because of site fees and things, he's done and he will do in the future. But. I admire the fact that he wants to bring fights here to Mexico. He said so many Mexican champions haven't been able to or wanted to do it. Right now, Hamili is being an aggressor, but a careful aggressor and an intelligent aggressor. And doing a great defensive job. Riante Hamili is keeping his hands up. He's lunging a little, but not getting hit so much with counter punches. And there's a good shot from Hamili. Now he's not intimidated, not to at say all. the least. And he's working hard, a very workmanlike effort here. And, and the, the other important point, Alan, is that he has tasted several of Morales' big power shots and he hasn't gone anywhere. He's working from the outside now, a little movement from Hamili. I think he's getting more comfortable. He seems to be oblivious. Well, this has, been his, this has been his best round of the fight, and he's taken the crowd out of this fight a little bit yeah. because of what he's done in this round. Now Morales is trying to come back off the ropes, but Hamili keeps boring in. Took it on the chin there, another combination right in the face. And he's throwing to see if Morales continues to press it right inside this. Morales will jump on you quick if you give him just the slightest opening. It's a great finisher. And I think he thought Hamili was hurt there, and I'm not sure he was, but he did come back well in this round. Closing seconds, round number four. And that's the end of round number four. Eight to go, if it goes that far. And despite the fact that uh, Morales came back with a good rally at the end of that round. The best round of the fight so far for Hamili.
Here is where Hamili was able to come forward, landed a good solid left hook and a right hand. Pretty good combination to the head of Eric Morales. And that speaks to the fact that Hamili is not throwing just one punch at a time. Well, Al, I've seen four rounds of Hamili fighting, and he didn't come in as a as a stiff by any means. He has some he has some abilities, and he's doing the best with them. Well, so many times in these lighter weight divisions, people from either from Europe or from Asia come in, and you just don't in South America often you don't know that much about them because they have never fought here, and you get a chance to see a couple of tapes that don't really show you enough. And then they end up being tough fighters. Emily has been the number one contender of the WBC. Felt he waited his time. And uh, now it's here. Even though Hamili gets off balance frequently and he throws his punches, he remembers to keep his hands up. And that's what makes it hard for Morales to counterpunch from time to time. See there, he was off balance when he was coming in, but yep. it was still hard for Morales to hit him. Now he's kind of standing on the ropes. Not as much movement as he had before. Morales is very happy to see that, to be frank about it. Eric Morales is not likely to make any big mistakes. None of that really did any damage. He merely continued to stay busy, but that all was picked off. You know, the wild card so far in this fight, I think, is the defense of Renate Hamili, which is better than it looked at the beginning. He's making it very tough for Morales to really land clean shots. See, there's an example. Once Morales is on the inside, punches are being slipped, they're being blocked. Well, we wonder if... As they kind of tangle up with a little wrestling there, we wonder if if Eric will begin to think that maybe he needs to put more of a show on and worry about the crowd or his own reputation or just continue to do what he has to do to win the fight. Sometimes that can be a factor, especially since we just saw Arce lose here. Well, there is pressure on you always, I think, when you fight in front of a big crowd to do more than just win. And all you can do is win, whether it's by knockout or, or, um, or decision, you have to just let it flow. 30 seconds. Just about coming up on 30 seconds left in round five. They lock up on the ropes in this very tiny ring, as Al Bernstein has pointed out tonight. We're at the Torreo de Tijuana fighting in the bull ring and closing up on the end of round that's the one that really hurts him I told you you were much better in this round Preparing that punch. That's the one that really hurts him. The right. Then you duck a little bit and you counter with the left up top. Of course you can do it. Let's go. Drink. Drink some water. You see how, how much more passive he was when you started going to the body? Thank you, Mario Solis, for that interpretation. And now they're talking about trying to wear him down and break down the defenses. I guess the way to do that is go to the body. Yeah, and the, part of the problem with that is 
that Hamili, oh, nice jab by Morales. Hamili has had good defense down there as well. And there's a little, seems to be a little bit of a cut over Hamili's left right eye. And Mart me. yeah, and Marty Denkin came over here and uh, told us that that came from a punch, not a clash of heads. Now Morales is swarming a little bit, but Hamili's able to step out of the attack. made Morales miss a lot. Now, in his last defense against Ramirez, um, Morales landed 43% of his punches, which is a very nice percentage. Numbers according to CompuBox to do that fight. And, uh, but tonight, clearly, it's a lot less. He's pressing the attack. Morales coming in behind his left. He seems to be able to double up the left sometimes now. Much less coming from Hamili in terms of offense now. He's trying to throw some bombs, being picked off by Morales as he looks to see what's going on, looking inside. And then just a little clutch there, and they push off. Hamili seemed to try to mount some kind of offense. Good counter right hand there a moment ago by Eric Morales. He has just about every punch. One punch that I thought he was going to use more of, and he started out tonight using it, is the jab, but he hasn't used that punch as much. And he, when he has, it's been mostly as a range fight. Nice, seems to be chopping away. More blood coming from the eye of Hamili. Menante Hamili from the Philippines. Putting up a very game effort tonight. That started something there. I don't know what was going to come. That was a right hand that was going to come from, I think, El Paso. I'm not sure which direction it was El Paso. <laughs> he held it up pretty good. Possibly San Diego. <laughs> there we go. The crowd not happy right now. But I don't know what Eric's supposed to do. He doesn't have that many opportunities. Good, a very good defensive fighter. Now he's responding and. Trying to chop away. He is doing damage. You can see the blood pouring in the right hand. That's a good punch. That's a right hand. Knocks Hamili down. Right on the chin. With just a few ticks left in round six. The referee is counting. And they're going to end the fight. And the hometown hero wins by knockout in six to retain his WBC Super Bantamweight title. And I would, I would just remark that Marty Denkin showed us what good refereeing is all about. He waited, he motioned the fighter to come to him, he took an extra two or three moments, and then said, no, I'm stopping this fight, and it was the appropriate call. And for Eric Morales, that power is the equalizer, because at any given time, even though, as we pointed out, good defensive job by um, Hamili, this man was able to get it done with his power. I do not believe that there is anyone at 122 pounds or 125 pounds who can stand up to his power when he hits them correctly. Well, Al, we saw an example of how quickly he can get on you. He's like a cobra. We're kind of going along here, and yep. Amelia's holding on, and then all of a sudden he gets a tiny opening, and bang, he, he was looking for it all night. You can, you can run, but you can't hide. Morales is a very explosive puncher, and that maybe was as good a demonstration of it as we have, as we have ever seen in his career. Here's where Hamili was getting against the rope. The jab set this up. He's using the jab effectively, which I think is a key point because the right hand is what would do the big damage. There's the jab throwing the right hand. There's a chopping right hand. Yep. He was already starting to hurt Hamili with these punches. That was actually a lead right hand that worked there, but the reason the lead right hand worked is because he had used so many jabs. And when he hits you like that, you're in big trouble. Well, the damage was being done. And, ooh. <laughs> That's a home run ball. That is a home run ball. That was a clean, nice punch. And for Eric Morales, we see the Morales from the outside with his power. We've also seen him on the inside with uppercuts and left hooks. 
He has many, many weapons to use against the fighter. Well, he can come at you from every angle, Al, and not to be trite about it, but the lead rider, it was a matter of him figuring out the combination, and he was going to get in sooner or later. And when you're doing the damage, and Hamili's starting to show the effects of the damage, you can see right as that combination came in, he started chopping away, chopping away. His guard came down, and that's all it took within a flash of an eye. And as I said, whether it's junior featherweight, which he's at now, or featherweight where he hopes to go soon, if Eric Morales hits you right, I don't know if you're going to stand up. And that's what happened with uh, Hamili. And so is the prince in his future? Is Antonio Barrera in his future? Um, one of those guys may soon be in the ring against Eric Morales. I'd love to see it. Right now, let's send it up. To Michael Buffer for the announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas y Caballeros, referee Marty Denkin, following the knockdown, calls a halt to the bout at three minutes and two seconds of round number six. The winner by knockout victory and still the undefeated WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, the Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Terrasco del Norte, Eric. El Terrible Morales! He's still the champion and looking every bit the part. And Al, I have to wonder, was this the way you saw this was going, basically, even though we didn't know much about the Filipino? Well, you know, uh, he defends his title for the seventh time. And one of the interesting things about this match is that uh, Hamili is a perfect example of a guy who is clearly not a bad fighter at all, has good defensive skills, and uh, can mount some offense. But if you are not a huge puncher um, against Eric Morales, Ultimately, he may get to you, and that was really what this was all about. Despite the good defensive technique of Hamili, eventually Morales was able to get to him. Okay, let's set it up to Mario and for some thoughts. Eric, estamos listos aquí para una breve entrevista. When people started whistling. I think you woke up and you got the knockout that I'm sure you so desired. La gente comenzó a buchear, segundos después lo noqueas. Antes que nada, ¿Te desesperaste? Antes que nada, quiero mandar un saludo al señor. Eh, a ver, está bien. Bueno, me desesperé, creo que él estaba ent entrando por debajo de mí. Creo que llegué a desesperarme porque me dejaba con los golpes en, 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 en el aire, ¿no? Porque si pasaba corto, me dejaba muy largo. He was basically coming in uh, really low, and it was difficult for him to, to get his timing and distance. Unlike most boxers, you say that you press for the knockout. You want to get the knockout. You don't wait for it to come. A diferencia de muchos boxeadores, tú dices que no esperas el knockout, tú vas en busca de él. ¿Se demoró demasiado? Did it take a little too long to get the knockout? Bueno, tiré buenos golpes. Lo encontré con buenas derechas. Parecía que era muy duro de su quejada. Empecé a boxear. Traté de hacerlo más, lo, 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 golpearlo, golpearlo, ir ganando round por round y no aferrarme en la couch. Creo que me salió muy bien y lo estuvo perfecto. He took his time and he believes that uh, the way he fought this fight had a perfect ending. You've talked about moving up to the uh, 126 weight division. Are you ready for that? Is Was this your last fight at 122? Unless, of course, you come back and get uh, Barrera. Has hablado de subir a la 126. ¿Es esta tu última pelea en la 122? Ah, posiblemente, todavía no sé, vamos a hablar aquí con mi promotor y a ver qué pasa, qué, 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 qué puede haber en 126. Y ya veremos. He says Bob has the answer to that, so we got to ask Bob, is he moving up to 126? We're very close to making a fight. Uh, between Eric, who I think is one of the great fighters in the world, and Barrera. That fight will be coming at 122 uh, for, uh, because he's the BO champion and Eric is the WBC champion. I've been talking with the Barrera people. The fight is very, very close to, to being made uh, maybe this year in uh, November. Great. Thank you so much. Felicidades. Bueno, antes que nada, un saludo al señor Labastida Ochoa y quiero decirles a todos Tijuana que fue una gran noche hoy. Just wants to thank everyone for a great night. Thank you guys and uh, 
Let's toss it down to ringside, Alan Allen. Okay, Mario, and uh, good job from you tonight. And uh, thanks back to Eric Morales for showing us a great champion that he is. Alan, I want to get your final thoughts. Uh, will he be able to bring more and more fights here to Tijuana? Or is he going to have to go across the pond to take on the Prince? Or Well, I, you know, what Bob Arum talked about certainly is a lovely appetizer to him uh, facing the Prince. Marco Antonio Barrera, who has the WBO championship, a great Mexican champion as well. There is bad blood between those two. They've had confrontations before outside the ring. I think that is a spectacular fight, and if that one would happen as soon as November, as Bob Arum indicated, I think it would be a treat for boxing fans, and I think it would be a slugfest. What did you think about your first night in the bull ring after 20 years of boxing coverage? You know what? Never been to this bull <laughs> ring, and i got to tell you, it was a lot of fun. These fans were great. Uh, they showed a lot of enthusiasm. We saw some good boxing. And your millions of fight fans across the country and around the world might want to know that you are a new papa. I want to say <laughs> congratulations to Thank Al Bernstein. You. Wes has been in the world for about, oh, <laughs> nine days now and he came down here to spend time and work with me i want to say thanks to our entire to crew tonight great to be with you the legend al bernstein mario solis everybody in the truck i'm alan massengale good night from tijuana